Hey, Tim. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> you? How's it all going? Yeah, not too bad. I've just had an extended lunch hour today, actually, and uh, chuck this one in. So luckily I can do that. Uh, what are you up to? I'm just pottering about in my studio at the moment, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Good. I saw one of your studios previously. And are you in the same one where it was in a loft? Because I, I, I kind of... Oh, God, that were you were talking about a good 30 40 years ago in a loft oh, okay fine okay you weren't you weren't around then were you oh 50 <laughs> you know I'm, uh, I'm knocking on a bit but no no i must have got mixed up with another one then cool. all right um so yeah i'm i'm on this freezing thing so i've got about 40 minutes um hopefully i won't okay. take any more time from you um is there anything you know you want to get out of this or anything you're worried about or do i just crack no. on not really, just crack on. In fact, to be honest, we we just received note yesterday that we sold all the tickets in Frome, so I don't even know about that. <laughs> oh, well, that's <laughs> awesome news. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. worries. That's awesome news because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's really good as well because on a Wednesday night, it's uh, a challenge to get people out sometimes, so that's actually yeah. a massive achievement. Well done. Oh, yeah. very, very tough for that. Okay, so uh, the, what I've got in the interview is I was going to cover a few things. One, the obvious ones around um, 80s, 90s period. I was going to ask a little bit about music technology, um, a little bit about your songwriting, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, probably end on, oh, and a little bit around touring. So a lot of it's fairly generic, I think, but I've tried to make it hopefully interesting to people because I've done a bit more, you know, a bit of research around the outside and looked at previous stuff you've done. Um, yeah. And I've never done an interview before, by the way. So you're my first. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Gentle with you. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. You see, yeah, no worries. Okay. So, um, so first of all, then, thanks very much, Nick, for taking some time out of your busy schedule uh, to um, answer some questions. Um, this is going out on Froom FM in a little while, a few weeks' time. Um, so, first question. This question relates to the 80s and 90s period. Um, most people who are listening to chart music in the 80s and 90s, they wouldn't fail to recognise you. The enormous hits that you had, The Riddle, Wouldn't It Be Good, Why Boy, Don Quixote, all the others. Um, but going back to that period, um, what are the highlights of that experience that you would sort of pick out? Um, hmm. Wow, OK. I mean, there were lots of great gigs i mean they were just um, and seeing amazing places and meeting amazing people um it's a diff difficult highlight. i mean most people would say okay well, well, the, the live aid would be a highlight but it's, it's certainly something i'm 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 never going to be allowed to forget <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure that it qualifies as a highlight though um but i think the it's it's all a bit of a blur to be honest because it wasn't that that long a period it was only between sort of 83 and 89 yeah 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 right in at the coal face you know and it was um it, it all went put by pretty quickly um i remember being incredibly excited i was living my dream i was i was yep. really um doing everything that i dreamt i would be doing and playing my music in front of thousands of, of people and and that was brilliant, but it was also terrifying at the same time. <laughs> so you, because it, that, you know, you just, you, it was all out of your control because you think, you, you know, I'm a bit of a control freak myself and it just, nobody was in control because it just had a momentum of its own. It was, it was sure. insane. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine what that is like from, you know, suddenly the dream becoming real and then wow you're in it and then you're on the roller coaster and then i imagine the demands are bang 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 and it is oh, yeah and you're and on you, it you like to think i mean you spit you spit the life before that you know it's, it's quite simple and you, you 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 know you can control your own you know, the way people perceive you and everything like that on a day-to-day -day sure. basis with, with with your personal life and stuff like that yeah but but when it all kicks off you don't it's just it completely all it, it's not your agenda anymore it's just everybody no. else is having a little bit of it you know and they decide who you are and, and what you like and, and i'm like no that's not me at all that's <laughs> spend a lot of time trying to rein it all in say no i didn't mean that Come on. <laughs> but so it, yeah it was it i found the whole yeah that the whole crazy media public you know thing yeah. quite difficult and being a being a you know a household name was quite, quite yeah. difficult yeah okay um so 
well, right the way back then, I had a thing called a Sanyo Sportster personal stereo. So it was wow. a Walkman copy. It was bright red. Oh. So it looked like a Ferrari, sounded like a car, looked like your panels in the backdrop, actually. Um, but uh, I didn't have much money, you know. And uh, when Christmas came around and all those sorts of things, um, I asked for music. And at the time, everyone bought, you know, now that's what I call music and the, the compilation yeah. albums. And, and they seemed to be the thing. Um, it got me thinking. What music were you listening to back then? Or were you on that roller coaster and you didn't even have time to think and take a bit of time out and listen to stuff? Yeah, I'd be, I think my, most of my ex exploratory years were, were, were before that, you know, in the 70s when yeah, I was okay. really listening to, to music, getting into music and, and all that, which, and that would have been anything from Led Zeppelin to sort of early Genesis, um, Bowie, um, I, I went through loads of different kind of phases. I was a skinhead at one time, so I just used to listen to Slade and and reggae and just uh, which was a great sort of musical foundation, really, for when you're actually going to start writing your own music, I guess, because I was into pretty much everything. And I was in a jazz fusion band for yeah. many years. But, yeah. but when I was in the thick of it, and I was kind of, it, it, it's all very self centered, you know, because you've got people around you that's surrounding you whose whose livelihood depends on you yeah and it's okay. just kind of, it, it's really difficult for it not to be all about you and it's still you do pay attention you, you pay attention at um you know what's flying about the charts who your rivals are who what's yeah. you know where the bench where the bar's being set now you know but the tears for fears bring an album out you think bloody yeah. hell it's got to sound like that now yeah um but yeah i was listening I'm listening to to stuff it was i was listening to as i said tears for fears scritty politi yeah, yeah um of, of that that age yeah I was, I was listening to that kind of stuff but still still listening to me old Joni mitchell albums as well so yeah 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 and I mean, everything you've produced particularly more recently i can see um all of those influences coming through you know it really is a a, a massive mix of stuff but yeah, confused. awesomely crafted no awesome <laughs> uh, from my perspective you um you had, uh, I did do a bit of research and you're on um, one, two, three, four. I think you're on six now albums, believe it or not. Um, yeah, you, but in yeah. 84, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, some, so apparently a statistic is that I was in the charts for 60 something weeks, which is pretty yeah. pretty amazing for one year. I don't know how I did that because <laughs> some songs overlapped and I, I had two songs in the, the top 40 at, one, at any given at one point. Yeah, so. I think that's thankfully how that's... there were videos as well so you didn't have to turn up at top of the box every week i imagine <laughs> yeah well true yeah there were videos but the, but um but then you had to make the videos which is quite yeah. exhausting well, so there you go never okay. happy oh. i'm gonna chuck it into the touring zone so you're doing a what i see now is a 17 date tour loads of venues three gigs in sweden is that right oh that's not no that's not gonna happen now that's 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 the late change it's just oh, just okay. the UK that we're doing now which is okay is going very well yeah just 11 shows in in the uk but uh, how does it feel do you think or how will it feel to be back on the road um it, it's 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 much easier now than it was it's much much less stressful i think you can see you've you've, you've been through your kind of uh, there, there was a period when you just kind of are terrified of losing it all and and yeah. and or a mistake was screwing up in public and and i think partly it's just getting older and just not really worrying that you know worry less about what other people think the older you get i think that's true of anybody um but just that if i don't know what i'm doing by now i, should, I bloody well should be <laughs> so now you can enjoy it more i guess you know when you've got that anxiety out of the way you can kind of yeah yeah I no, in the past, when I got really nervous and think, oh, and people said so people have bought tickets to come and see you. You know, it's not like you know you start throwing stuff. <laughs> it, so, so you're on a winner anyway when you're doing your own gigs because people have bought tickets. You know, and it's not so much so on festivals, but on gigs, yeah, people people are coming to see you, um, and just to do what you do. You know, people actually yeah. like what you do. that's why they come in to, to to see you do it. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's 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 much more relaxed and, and fun and and I don't do it very often so it's a, still a bit of a novelty sleeping on a tour bus and 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 doing all that so it's it 
and I'm I'm surrounded by great people as well. That I think that's really important. Just people that you don't you really like hanging out with, other than yeah, you know, just being on stage with them. You just kind of like hanging out with them too. So it so feels like it's a you know compared to some of these you know big big bands. I, I quite like Depeche Mode, and you, you know they go on the road and they're you know two years, <laughs> and you just think oh my goodness how do you do that so i guess in your world in this particular tour you know you can you can kind of yeah sit back and enjoy and your family won't miss you that long for that long i imagine you know you glad to get rid of me to be honest <laughs> COVID. it's like you come yeah. down and say, oh god it's you again <laughs> <laughs> cool okay could i ask you a few questions about the songwriting process yeah um so um, I don't think many people um, really understand what's, you know, you're such a highly regarded songwriter and all the other bits that you've done. Um, could you give us a little glimpse into your songwriting process? You know, how does it work for you? Well, that's, uh, you, you have no idea how difficult a question that is. <laughs> is it? Okay. <laughs> it's because... I don't know. I mean, uh, even after all these years, if, if if anybody asked me, well, how do you write a song? I don't know is the answer to the question because it's it's so I've, uh, it's so different every time you do it, and I, I I'm and I've done it differently over the years as well. So you um, there was a, a time when I had so much creative energy; it was just yeah. just it poured out of me. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I didn't question it and especially when people are buying your records you don't question it at, at all because you think, yeah. just think everybody loves everything i do it's brilliant so you you just do it but uh, um but then you start questioning it when they're not buying the records you think well, what am i doing wrong and and how did i did it be how did i do it before you know what yeah, was yeah. different and it wasn't it um the part of that answer is it was nothing to do, do with the songwriting anyway so that but how do i write a song i don't know i i kind of sometimes there's a, a bunch of words that come with a with a little tune attached or a tune with a bunch of words that's just a few little phrases um and and you can you can build a, a song around that that little phrase um sometimes a whole song will come into my head not very often anymore but that that does happen and, and you know where it's going you know where the verse is going you know where the chorus is going usually even though if I've got a couple, a few words for for a hook or a chorus, I, the, the lyrics come second. Yeah, okay. Usually. And lyrically, I I kind of I've, I've 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 developed a technique now whereby I, because I take ages writing lyrics, I'll just write a load of old nonsense for um that so just to to illustrate to me what the rhyming scheme is and yeah. um the meter of the of of the. The, the phrases and and all that kind of stuff so you just put nonsense down and then you just tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and tw until it kind of makes some kind of sense but at least you've got a skeleton to, to hang the words on basically yeah. i but guess being just... a multi-instrumentalist it must be almost more challenging sometimes as well i mean i get a sense that um when i listen to your lyrics and look at them you know they are they are finely crafted you know they are there's, they work on a number of levels as well, um, I think, and they definitely tell a story most of the time, other than the riddle, obviously. But um... well, obviously, but, uh, but well, that some the, the weird thing is sometimes sometimes that's accidental. It might sound really wow. cross. Okay. Sometimes up, you're just looking for the right phrase and, and the right words, and it, on a very basic level, you're looking for something with three syllables that rhymes with that other word back there and you know think and you just kind of shoehorn it in to make a bit of sense but sometimes you, i can look back on, on lyrics and i can see i can see how they work on various levels and i it, uh, and i'd like to take credit for that but I, can, I'm, I have to admit that that's not always on purpose that just kind of happens that's quite quite extraordinary how it does happen but it does happen like that yeah okay all right cool um I saw that you recently collaborated on a track with your daughter Izzy called Paranoid. Um, I listened to it. I think it's an awesome track. It's really funky. It's punchy. Um, awesome guitar sounds. The vocals and the harmonies, especially, sound really, really nice. And um, but I just wanted to know, you know, what's it like collaborating with one of your children? I know if I collaborate with my children, you know, we can have golden days and we can have pretty brown days. So, what's it like for you? Well, it's, it's for years and years and years because. Um, is it, he's always been into her music and she's um you know but never at any point would she let me 
get involved or, to, or teach or it's, even even to, when, when you first picked up a guitar you know so well, i can show you a few good now i'm going to do it myself <laughs> yeah it's it's all she's been doing everything herself and it, obviously and it even went through a point of of not wanting to be a curse shore because you didn't want to be riding on my coattails mm -hmm. you know like she didn't she didn't want to a be in my shadow or 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 do something great and then someone has turned around and say well it's only because you're nick Kershaw's yeah, yeah. daughter yeah so so i've always kept my distance because of that and, and it wasn't until she came to me and said look um do you want to write a song together do you want to do a song i thought yeah that'd be fun i kind of waiting her... for this <laughs> I, but i let her, i let her lead it um and, and i just kind of jumped in when i thought the the, the time was right to do a little bit myself she, she, most of the song is her but I, I did i think i wrote the middle eight and i did a, 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 some bits and pieces on when, when we mixed it and, um, and but she basically produced it and i just kind of put, put, gave an opinion every now and again um but it was great and i learned a, a whole load you know i, I, I yeah. learned more than she probably you know d even just really on a technical level it's like i've been using uh, a piece of software called logic audio yep. which a lot of people know i've been using it since it came out in 1990 whatever it was um and doing things a certain way because there's so many different ways of doing something and, I, and she was watching me do something and i was clicking on that and it was taking about 20 minutes to do this one little thing and she looked at me and she said why don't you do that <laughs> <We> said, <laughs> like seconds to do what i just said Take, taking 20 minutes doing so I, I learned a load of, about that and just the way different people listen to things sonically very different you know yeah but, okay. um, yeah it was it was a, a really good experience cool um so oh and also the video i've got to ask this question um is that your face sort of cgi'd on some of the characters well she didn't she didn't even tell me she'd finished it she said she told me she was doing it because i because because she um she said right i'm gonna do the video and and i'm like oh my video days are over i just don't want to just just sort of jumping up and down in front of me <laughs> what if i don't do the video that's fine we we can do we can we could do something else and then she got me to send her pictures of my face at different angles yeah and, yeah what's going on here um and, and then she made the video from that yeah and, and that, that that's that is my face on other people's body and it's very it's very spooky but um <laughs> she didn't tell me it was she'd finished it or tell me when she when it came out so it's like people saying have you seen great video and i'm like what <laughs> I didn't even know there was one so no, she's good at communicating things like that but awesome um so uh, kind of new music topic very quickly um listener uh guy called scott on the south coast down in dorset he um asked me to ask you um can you recommend any new talented artists or people that you personally like and you listen to at the moment oh blimey i'm i've no i'm i've you you, you i'd probably ask him the same question actually because i've I, i'm sadly out of the loop um I'm, i don't have that kind of um inquisitiveness that i did in my younger days I've, I've i've kind of a bit set in my ways and i've it's only if if something come come turns up that you can't ignore that something like the 1975 or something yeah yeah just, yeah you know, it's all over the place and well and then you go well i'll check this out what's all this about but um no i don't i don't have any secret ins on 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 anyone that's you know i i, I don't work a lot with other people anymore i haven't i haven't done that since i sort of um early 2000s really yeah okay um, so so i'm just in my own little bubble uh, doing my own little thing really <laughs> i find it personally um you know since digitization and you know streaming platforms and all the other things you know that the volume of music is obviously available to people is it's just huge now um and it really does open your eyes doing this radio show i do a lot of research and you kind of end up down channels and then you end up in other areas and you, you know, I, I think I could spend my life just listening to music just to, and, and, and it's very, and very, music. it's very, very strange. I mean, downside is I've got to learn a living and all the other things, but yeah, yeah. but uh, okay. Um, right. Next question. Um, so I particularly like the album Oxymoron 
Um, it was eight, eight, eight years be uh, between the release of that, your, your studio album, the eighth one, um, entitled Eight, I think, and then your move to the oxymoron. What were you up to in those eight years? That's that a very good question. And, and, and someone's going to be asking me that same question in 10 years' time when I bring the next one out. <laughs> um, it just, everything takes longer, you know. Um, first of all, you got to be, it takes longer to get in the zone. Yeah. Of, 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 because there's no one um, breathing down my neck going, right, we've got to have a, this, this album for that. And there's, there's, you know, you've got a photo session on that day and you've got to do this on that day. And there's no there's no one over my shoulder doing that, and which is great. I love yeah. that. that yeah, yeah downside is that you kind of things take longer because there's no one cracking the whip yeah um and i get distracted very easily for just just sort of um doing other things but so it it, it will happen i haven't started it for the next okay. one um but the last one took 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 a long time because of the same reason it took me a long time to start it um and then it, it takes a long time because you you spend a lot of a time repeating yourself and uh, because you're doing things that you've done before so you're trying to find a way of getting into it that doesn't repeat yeah thing you've done before you know and so there's a lot of um a lot of casualties along the way as far as songs go so you know songs get started and not finished because they sound too much like something else or yeah not working um and 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 then it takes me ages to record it because I do, I'm doing it on my own and I just kind of um, sit here and I just potter really and after a, a few years of pottering it, there's there's an album at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's a lovely way of doing it. I can't I can't believe. Um, I think that album I've written here, you know, I think it's a masterclass in songwriting. Um, there's a mix of styles. There's so many stories in there. And it really, some of the tracks, you know, tug at the heartstrings. Um, the opener, the chosen ones, I, that gets me personally a little bit emotional. Um, second track, Cloudy Bay to Malibu, fantastic. And you end the album with that track, They Were There, which is, you know, wow, you know, that gets you. I challenge anybody not to be got by that one. Um, but one thing that struck, struck me, and, and please uh, bear with me here, was... I get a feel as I listen to some of those tracks that they're almost musical theatre or there's there's almost something in there that could be musical theatre. So the question is, have you ever been asked to do anything related to musical theatre? No, I haven't. And and, and I, I haven't. I'm, I'm not. Do you know, I, I would never sit down and listen uh, other than West Side Story. Um, I wouldn't sit down and actually listen to a musical theater album or music it doesn't really get me um, I, th I, th I think the modern stuff like hamilton have you been able I to haven't see hamilton i think i see uh, but my favorite uh, has to be the book of mormon though because yeah yeah, that's yeah. Absolute, absolute genius that is um so so but no that's 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 a whole other kind of it's a bit of a closed chop, I think, getting into that world. Yeah. Okay. So, and I, I'm, yeah, it's not something I'm going to start at the age of sixty-five. I don't think. <laughs> Someone wants to, you know, take take a bunch of my songs and, and make a music out musical out of it. That's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> we have that to might. plug it, I think, because there's plenty. There's a little story in a lot of them, I think, and uh, yeah, challenge to do it though. Okay. Um, going to move into music technology because I had quite a few questions around this one. Okay. Um, I've got a show in the making. It, um, it's all about the Fairlight CMI, and I'm interviewing a gentleman called Roger Bolton that lives up the road, and he was their European product specialist. So when it was rolled out around the around Europe, he was helping with that. He's also a composer and various other things. Um, but a few people have asked what synths you've used over the years, and do you, do you have any real favourites? Um, well, the, the Fairlight was a was a, was a big deal when it when it came out. Yeah, that was so we used that extensively on the on the on the human racing and, and riddle albums. Mm, you can hear hear it, I think. But and it's all eight bit, and it's all that old, you know, that that crunchy sounding sampling, which is which has got a sound of its own. Um, really, I'm because I'm not a keyboard player. I can I can sort of play with one finger, and I. But I, I can get my computer to play anything <laughs> I want it to play. The magic. <laughs> look at me. Look what I did. Um, 
so I, I, I haven't re- yeah, I'm not really kind of, um, I haven't, I haven't retained an, inst- an interest in, in what, what keyboards are around. Um, in fact, you know, there was a time in the nineties when you couldn't give away the, the, the old eighties keyboards, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I remember moving house in, um, in early sort of two thousands and, and having a, a, all this stuff and all flight cases full of synths and stuff. And I, I'm, I hate to say this and I admit to this, but they all ended up in a skip. They really did. <laughs> and Oberheim OB8 ended up in a skip. Um, Roland JP something or others ended up in a skip. Couldn't, you honestly couldn't give them away. And I know. And and now you, you, they're 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 going for fortunes, you know. But yeah, the the old Roland keyboards. I used a lot of Roland keyboards. In fact, the the one keyboard I suppose my favourite synthesizer because it, it it was the one that got me started um would have to be uh a roland um oh god <laughs> um oh god that's terrible i forgot the name of it it's a uh, roland i'm gonna not google a, not it. a juno or the juno 60 juno. there you go yeah there you go <laughs> the juno 60 um because that that was the first one I ever had. In fact, the first one I had didn't even you know, have any memories in it. But it it really is a really basic keyboard and it, it, keyboard synthesizer. But it, it at a really basic level, it shows you how to get into ADSR um, envelopes, generators, and all, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I've still got you know I I use an emulator on on my a soft synth yep. version of it. When I still I still so I go back to those sounds again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can get those sounds to 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 do the job that you want them to do, you know, without you know wading through three million sounds on some other soft synths because that that's 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 a great time waster that is. <laughs> you, you, you've um, we had a question from a guy called Jerry who's local and um, he asked specifically around that topic and you know the digital digital audio workstations able to and all the other things that are out there nowadays and everything's so far more accessible you know people can actually afford to go and get some soft synths get a door and and basically create stuff you know do you have a view on that you know oh, it's brilliant it's yeah. absolutely amazing. i mean you've basically you know if, if in my if, back in the 80s if you wanted to make any kind of decent sounding recording that's the, you know 1500 quid a day in a studio and yeah. a, and a bonkers um, you've got to have all your all your ducks in a in a row to, before you go in because you don't want to waste all that studio time whereas you can just potter about in your bedroom now with with um with logic that's not expensive that comes with that you I know mean, yeah, but they give them away with apple max now don't it I, yeah i think it's they yeah maybe not but <laughs> you could yeah and that's 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 as good as it gets you know you can you can they've got great soft sense built into them you know you can you've got a studio and a, and a laptop so everybody can do it and that that's brilliant for everybody i think not so great if you own a massive expensive recording studio but mm. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so we've been pondering with a few pals around, you know, what technology is going to be around in 20, 30 years. You know, AI is a big buzzword. There's so many things out there that are changing. Um, you know, do you, any thoughts on that topic? You know, well, that's that's a tricky one, isn't it? AI. I mean, hopefully, I'll be dead before they're writing <laughs> writing all the music. But um, but it could happen. I mean, I'm sure there's there's AI generated stuff going on that we don't even know you know is ai generated a lot of the time and that that's so yeah. it's already it's already got to that stage you know you're kind of flicking through youtube videos and you're saying and you're looking at something and said that doesn't look real and it's not real yeah, yeah. it is quite it, that that's quite terrifying it's, ter- it's terrifying you know i'm not not talking about music now but it's terrifying when you've you've got um one presidential candidate using ai to, to no, against another. Hang on a minute. That's lying, isn't it? That's cheating. Yeah. Um. Uh, so that that's quite scary when when people are using it in that way. But um, hopefully it will serve us, and we won't end up serving it. Yeah. 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 Good. Good way of thinking about it. I mean, my gut feel is, you know, people people that go out and see gigs, you know, that live experience, um, is is another level, and without that live experience, music is great. 
but it's the icing on the cake. So, uh, and it, yeah. it is about it's a human thing. And music is just even just like sitting around a campfire with a with, yeah, with an acoustic, singing some songs. That's that's a really direct connection that you, you you're never going to be able to re- recreate. I don't think with with AI, and I think it's important um, that it all goes back to that. Yeah, we're lucky in Froome. Um, there's quite a few small uh, pubs where they'll have regular sort of jam sessions, and people just turn up basically and play music. It's absolutely awesome. Um, no charge. Just go and sit in a pub, have a beer, and listen to some people jamming and making stuff, and it's yeah, awesome. Like, you know, that's a place, and obviously the um, the the gig we're doing, the uh, the cheese and grain, that is, is is such a that's that's an iconic venue in itself, isn't it? It's it's sort of like being a Glastonbury warm up. I'm I'm going to be treading the boards, um, <laughs> steps of you know Foo Fighters and McCartney and God knows. Yeah, who. indeed. I mean, we're really lucky to have that venue. I think that the community, you know, are hundred percent so proud and happy to have it. Um, there's a guy called Merv Pepler who's a uh, he in a band, well, he's got a band called Eat Static, um, quite yeah. well known. Um, and he was one of the guys I think that turned it into uh, started to turn it into a music venue many many years ago. And and now obviously we've got Emily Evis a patron. We've got a really cool community basically supporting it um they had local college night down there performing a few weeks ago which i went to at like a jules holland session with five or six bands around the the the, the, the environment and we'd switch to a different stage and listen to that and switch to another so we're very fortunate and uh, it's gonna be great to see you there um yeah awesome you have to have a cider though if you drink um you know down in somerset afterwards yeah yeah yeah, yeah. My, if... my experience with cider it's not something i'll be drinking before the gig uh, no, and, and probably one, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so I'm moving to the end, actually. I've got a few more, but um, after all the interviews that you've done over the years, is there a question that you wished you had been asked? <laughs> that, that's, that's, a re- that's a really tricky one. Um, not <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, if you can't think of one, is there one you wish you hadn't been asked? And it can't be this one. So, you know, I, I looked at some old videos of you, um, you know, on the sort of classic Saturday morning shows. And yeah. uh, you played those so well, you know. It, Did I? I, I was, yeah, they were kind of really strange. Yeah. Strange. But you had to, yeah, but you you get people, your kids phoning in and asking you questions. And you, you better have an answer ready because otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> like an idiot, yeah. No, I can't. I can't think of a question that I'd see. I kind of, I can't, I can't believe that anybody's interested in anything I've got to say, to be honest. So it's, so I, I, I'm very grateful that, that, uh, you know, people want to know stuff, you know, That's... but I, I, I can't think of one question that um, I, w- I haven't been asked that I would like to have been. Got you. Okay. And um, when it comes to the gig, uh, I did look on the press release that, you know, you're going to weave some covers in and various other bits. Can you give us any little uh, uh, early heads up on, um, you know, what, what we can expect? Very old press release, isn't it? Things might have moved on since then. I can't remember. Are we doing any covers? Um, I'm not sure we are. Well, yeah, no, I can't. I, th- I think my, the, the great thing about doing your own gigs really is, is that, in front of your own crowd is that you, you you're going to play the hits obviously you're going to play the hits and then you um but you can play some of the stuff some other fan favorites and you can play some of the stuff that your favorites and you can just kind of mix it all up because people are going to be there for you while you're doing yeah. it and it's great and then you've always got to hit up your sleeve to when people are nodding off so <laughs> Well, thankfully, I think we've all got our uh, virtual arms around you on this one in the band. So, uh, yeah, it should be a good night, I think. And uh, I'm sure you're going to have an awesome tour. Um, OK, well, that's probably the end of the interview, if that's the case. Um, thank you very much, Nick, for taking some time out, um, for making this easy for me. As I said, it's been the first interview I've kind of ever done like this. Um, yeah, and uh, look forward to seeing you. Maybe, maybe we can catch up for a cider at some point when you're in the town. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much, Tim. You're a natural, mate. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I'll cut it there then, I guess. Um, awesome.